Good morning, Fishbourne Primary School. How wonderful it is to have you back in school. I know I haven't had a chance to come around and see everybody because we need to keep safe in our bubbles, but we're just so thrilled that you're all back at school now. And it's lovely to be able to do an assembly that I know you'll all be watching in your classrooms. So we're going to start the assembly by lighting our candle. I've actually got my matches over to the side because I don't want to catch fire to my computer screen because that wouldn't be a good start, would it? So I'm gonna just strike it over to the side and then light it and then I can show you my candle when it's done. Okay, so here is my candle. It's got a flicker in the flame, which you might just be able to see. If I hold it still, you might just see that flickering in the top up here. Okay, I can see that it's making different shapes. And I'm gonna pop that down next to us. Okay, just to remind us that we're all together and we're having time to think and reflect. So our assembly today is going to be carrying on with the theme of inspirational people. You have seen so many over the past and Mrs. Day had that wonderful board with them all stuck onto. So today it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be somebody that inspired me, or some, it's more than one person actually, it's two people that inspired me when I was young. And they're both sports people. And those sports people inspired me for lots of different reasons, which I'm going to talk through with you as we have a little look at them. So I'm going to share my screen with you now so that you can see who it was that inspired me. When I was young. OK, so we're just going to go up. There we go. So. These two people are sports people that inspired me when I was young. And it all started when I saw them on the television performing lots of ice dances. They are famous Olympic and world champion ice skaters. Okay, they're called Dame Torville and Christopher Dean. And in 1984 at the Sarajevo Winter Olympics, they won the gold medal. And they inspire me for lots of different reasons, which I'm going to talk about with you now. So Christopher Dean, who was he? Well, when he was a little boy, he had a bit of a sad life because his mother left his household and never, never, it was never really spoken about and he didn't know why. So he was left with his father and wondering where his mother had gone and why she'd gone because lots of things weren't spoken about as openly as they are nowadays. And he carried on life with his father. His father had a tough job. He worked down a coal mine and you can see that there's a picture of a man down a mine, mining for coal. So it was long, dark days or nights and Christopher had to carry on going on to school, getting on with the jobs that he needed to do while his father had this long, um, dark job, a bit gloomy as well. However, his father was lucky enough to meet somebody else and they became a couple and Christopher's life started to get a bit more busy. And he was always interested in sport. And one Christmas, he got some ice skates. Now, he'd never done ice skating really before, but he got these skates and happened to live not too far from the rink. So he decided to take it up. And his parents had been keen ballroom dancers, which is another type of performing. So it was probably in his blood a little bit that he would want to perform. He started skating at age 10 and had his first ice dance partner at age 14. Okay, so even though he'd been this little boy who'd been heartbroken, he was determined and he found a hobby that he wanted to do and persevered with it. Now, he didn't start skating till he was 10. Some of you might be watching this thinking, well, I'm 10. I thought it was a bit too late to find what I wanted to do and which hobby. It's never too late, children. Some children start their hobbies really young when they're two or three. Some of them start them when they're 10. Some of them don't start them until they're an adult. So it's never too late to find what you really enjoy doing and what you're good at. You will always find something new. So Jane and Chris, I'm just gonna move myself slightly because I'm aware I'm over the picture. Jane and Chris became a couple and started, um, when I say a couple, I mean a couple in ice skating. They weren't a couple as in going out with each other or being boyfriend and girlfriend. They started skating together in their teens, okay? They were both junior champions, but then they joined together as a partnership. They both needed a partner, a new partner. So in 1985, at the Winter Olympics in Sarajevo, they won the gold medal. They then turned professional, competing and performing in professional shows and competitions where they won many more medals. And this is kind of the bit that I liked. So even though they'd won their Olympic Games, 
They didn't just say, right, that's it then, off we go. They turned professional, performing in shows for people to come and watch them, and still some competitions. And they won many more medals, but also inspired a lot of other people to get involved in skating. And there they thought, right, okay, we've done a lot of this, what can we do next? So they choreographed routines for other skaters. So they made up their routines that they would do on the ice and helped other skaters become world champions with their routines that they created. I'm thinking, I partly recognise them. Well, that's because they present a programme on um, a Saturday night called Dancing on Ice. In fact, I think it's Saturday nights now, Dancing on Ice. And you may have seen them as the judges. But not only are they judges, they still perform. So even though they're much, much older now, they still perform, they still like to keep fit, they still like to inspire others, and they've even brought back some of the routines that they did a long, long time ago, making them a little bit um, safer on their bodies, obviously, at their ages. So they've gone through skating together, competing, performing in shows, and then helping other people to skate, okay, and perform well. But you might be thinking, what's this got to do with Mrs. Trigus? How did they inspire her? Well, after seeing their performances, I wanted to start skating. And I was lucky that I lived near an ice skating rink, so I was able to go and have a go. But from watching them, I thought, well, you're never too old to follow that dream, are you? I already did dancing and I went to brownies and lots of other hobbies that some of you do. I'd never tried skating and it was a bit nerve-wracking because there were children there that had started skating from when they were about two and a half to three as soon as they could walk and I was going in at nine not far off ten so I went along and I was a bit wobbly and a bit nervous but I'd watched them so much that I thought surely I can do this if I follow my dream and I persevere so even when it was tough I carried on persevering and trying and trying sadly I was only able to do it for a couple of years because I then moved away from where the rink was and it was just too far to keep going back to an ice skating rink. But I thought to myself, okay, so I wanted to be an ice skating teacher. I can't do that anymore and I've got to accept that. But actually, could I still be a teacher in some ways? Could I still help others? And that's when I kind of thought, yeah, I think I want to be a teacher and help children in schools. So as I grew up, I started to study and learn. And that's what happened, I became a teacher. So although I wasn't able to teach ice skating, I was able to teach all of the children just like you, okay? Now, this is an exciting part for me because when I was having a look in my loft, I managed to find an old ice skating video from when I was 10. So the same age that Christopher started, I had already been skating about a year. And I managed to find a video, which I had to play on a very old video recorder. It wasn't like we have now, where we can just download it off Netflix. It was a tape that you have to put into a recorder. And luckily I had a little old telly that I still had kept to watch old videos. And here is a little video, which I'm going to share with you, of me skating when I was 10. So the same age as a lot of you, maybe in year five, or maybe in year six. Okay, I'm gonna play that for you now, just for you to have a watch. It's only a couple of minutes long. Hopefully, it will play. Oh, seems to have disappeared. Oh, hang on. Oh, don't know if it liked that. Let's try again. Here we go. There we go.
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Now, I did look a little bit stretched, didn't I? Where I stretched my picture, I looked a bit of a funny shape. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that because I just wanted to show you how watching somebody else do something can inspire you. And I was so inspired that that's what I learned to do. And as I said before, that led me on to becoming a teacher. Now I'm going to stop sharing my screen just there. Okay, because what I'd really like to do now, if I can, is show you a little clip of Torville and Dean ice skating. Now, obviously, they've been skating a lot longer than me. So hang on just one minute. I've got it ready, but I do need to share my screen again. So if I can share my screen with you now. Okay, we share that. Then you should be able to see a little bit of them ice skating, their famous dance that they won the olympics with this was them in the world championships but they actually won the olympics with the same routine but in 1985 so here we go Just stop there. Sorry, we'll let that carry on. Okay, and I'm just going to pause it there because I just wanted to say to you that ice dancing in pairs is a lot harder because you're having to keep together all of the time and you're having to take each other's weight and you're having to move as a pair and tell a story at the same time. So if I'd been skating a lot longer, maybe I could have gone on to do something like that. Who knows? Okay, so I hope today you've been able to see how just seeing something on the television inspired me to do something great. And not only did it keep me fit, it inspired me to help others. So what can you think of that might inspire you to help others? If you're great at football, maybe you can become a football coach. Um, if you're great at brownies or scouts or cups, maybe you're gonna help somebody to learn how to make campfires when you're older or to take people on camping trips. There's lots you can do to inspire others and make the world a better place. Right, could you put your hands together and close your eyes? Dear God, even in these unsettled times that we've experienced, thank you for giving us the time to pause, to think and look around us. Thank you for helping us to appreciate the world and the nature out of our windows. The trees, the birds, the lakes, the rivers, and just that time to think, stop and reflect. To think about our families, our friends, and how we can be the best that we can be. Thank you again for having bringing us back together so that we can learn and develop as a team. Amen. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the assembly. And let me know if there's anything that's inspired you or that you think might inspire you. I'd be really interested to know. Bye-bye, everybody.